Good morning and welcome to another episode of The F Word. Today it's, it's myself and PJ. Um, we'll be getting into, into a, few, uh, to a few things this morning. PJ specifically will be talking about um, price power parity um, and we're looking at, uh, looking at inflation. Um, so let's get into it. PJ, you know, I'm quite a practical guy. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll be speaking about where do you start investing? So I think it's quite difficult, uh, specifically when, when, you, when you're young, when you're a young professional, to, to know where to start, where to go, and even who to speak to. Um, and and let's, let's, let's start it quite an quite a easy, practical way to, to sort of give yourself an outline of, of where to start. And that, that first thing is setting goals. So really, really easy. Let's just start with three, short term, medium term, and long term. So what is a short term goal in terms of your finances? Is setting up emergency savings so emergency funds that can help you when let's say as an example you've got a flat tire um you, your, your car needs a new battery these are the types of things that you need to plan for um and if you do it correctly um you can have, you can you can avoid avoid stepping in, into the trap of a, of a credit card especially when you're young because you'll have the cash for it you'll have the emergency savings for it and something like a credit card would would not be needed and and obviously getting getting quite quite into the thick of that so what what do you do when with emerging emergency savings that should definitely be a little bit more conservatively invested um what is the type of structure that you would use you use use a flexible structure um something that's liquid um and of course being liquid um, and being for emergencies you should definitely be be conservative um, medium term is the next one. So what would be an example of, of a medium term goal? That would be something like the deposit for a home. Um, so let's say medium term can be anything from three to four years as an example. Um, what would also be a type of structure to be used in, in, in that type of goal um, is also a flexible structure. So once again, it is liquid, but now in, in terms of the asset allocation, um, we can do a little bit more um towards the aggressive side um more more let's say the multi-asset uh, multi-asset side so in instead of only cash and bonds as an example you can definitely go a little bit into into shares as well so what would be the third one the third one is a long-term goal what's a long-term goal retirement so obviously for most young professionals that's 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 quite far away um and what is an example of of uh, retirement is a retirement annuity of course uh, ra now, of course, being long term and obviously being part of um, the Pension Funds Act, it's regulated by Regulation 28. So in terms of the asset exposure of a retirement annuity, you're only, only allowed certain limits in terms of, of the underlying assets. Um, but obviously being long term, I would say maximize offshore exposure and maximize equity exposure in, in that type of, uh, in that type of uh, portfolios. Now, now we've set our goals. What do we do next? We choose a platform. How do you choose a platform? Well, firstly, I would definitely speak to an independent advisor who can give you advice on the pros and cons uh, of of each platform um, that can guide you. And it's and they're not you know guided by you know their own fees or, um, or 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 working for a specific company that sells you a specific platform. They need to be independent. Um, but they can give you the pros and the cons. And of course, they can look into the fees of each platform and then you can choose accordingly. Um, what is an example of an investment platform? 91, Sunam Glacier, Allen Gray, Momentum Wealth. There's, there's a few others, but that's, that's what you're looking at. Um, now, what do you invest in? So we've set our goals. We've chosen a platform. We've actually chosen the, the structures as well. But what are the underlying assets? Now, this is definitely where, where the, the, the financial advisor, independent financial advisor comes in. Um, now, these goals that you've set with your structures, now they need to guide you through um, each of these structures, the investment horizon and the liquidity of each, and then choose the underlying assets that would fit into, into that sort of portfolio in order to reach your specific um, investment goals. So that's really, really practical. Um, I, I think it, it is sort of a good way to start looking into it. And, and specifically, um, if you're starting out, don't make it too, um, too intricate. Start, start basic. And that's, that's, that's a, a very easy way of, of getting into it. Um, PJ, any, any comments on that? 
Yeah, thank you, everyone. That's very, like you say, standard. And that's the thing we need with investments. It needs to be simple and we need to do it because otherwise we complicate it too much. We don't do anything. So that's very practical. So definitely I took some advice from that as well. And remember, it's very personal. And remember, if you have a short-term goal, don't compare it to the long-term goal. Don't compare it to other people's investments. You know, it's your goals and your investments. And if it's for the long-term, don't even look at it monthly. But I know that's very difficult to do. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about the purchasing power parity. That's a very smart wording. But it's basically the difference between countries um, in the inflation. So let's say in the USA, inflation is 2% average. And in South Africa, average inflation is 6%. In the long run, the currency will weaken. So we know a lot of people will say, especially our parents will say, well, in the old days, the rand was one rand to the pound. or was even stronger than a pound, like 30, 40 years ago. But times have changed and our inflation is a lot higher and that's why the currency will weaken over time but if it weakens let's say inflation six percent your salary might increase of six percent hopefully increase with inflation above inflation well if someone in the u.s salary will only increase two percent so if all stays the same we, you get the same riches in the other countries maybe in emerging markets even more because there's more risk that you take things that you do so it's very difficult to compare now with 40 years ago. So I'm just going to share a presentation with you guys. This is a purchasing power parity, and this is over the long run. Some people also call it, or another one that they use the McDonald's index. But just for interest sake, let's say this is the average, the pink line, and this is with the U.S., United States. Is What's the difference between the currency? So if difference in inflation. So over the long run, like I said, if you increase your salary of your inflation and they increase it to that. That's what a currency should have done over the long run. But this is just only a guideline. You can see this times and where we are now, there's a lot cheaper than that. And that's why when you go overseas at this stage, it's a lot more expensive because you can't buy the, the same stuff that you used to. The same with the Big Mac index. That's also something they use. So what does a Big Mac cost in South Africa? Versus what the Big Mac will cost in the U.S. It's very difficult because there's labor. Our labor might be is definitely cheaper than theirs. But it just gives you indication. So the most expensive place to get a Big Mac index or a Big Mac is in Switzerland. And it costs you over $8. So in Rand terms, that's, let's say, just, that's almost 160 Rand. While in the United States, it will cost you $5.70 Rand or $5.70. And in South Africa, it will only cost you $2.70. So you can see for a guy coming from overseas that loves his Big Macs, it's quite good to come here. And in South Africa, on this in specific index, there's only three countries that's cheaper. It's India, Indonesia, and Taiwan. That's the cheapest with $2.40. So you can see that is a very, our country, the rand is cheap. I think we all know that, especially when we go overseas. But it's not always like that. And you can see the line above and line below is two standard deviations from the average what that just means is when it gets close to that line you can see in 2000 2001 it was also a time a lot of people said take all your money out of the country it was gonna eat 20 rand but there's times where it's expensive but then it becomes cheaper and you can see from the 2000 2010s it was cheaper than the power purchase parity. just if we get back to that line again and again, there's reasons you can't only use this. This is just an indication because there's reasons we are above the line. Our day to GDP is a lot higher than that used to be. So this is not advice. This is just to give you an indication where we are. But let's say it just goes back to the average. On this slide, you can see the fair value is almost at 14 Rand to the dollar. So that would be great when you want to go overseas. And sometimes it can even become more cheap like i said these periods then you can go almost to 12 rand there's got to happen a lot of stuff in our country but if the sentiment turns because a lot of this is sentiment then you can see the rand actually strengthens to the dollar but again that's a long time ago but just for interest we always compare to the us and the uk because that's a, a lot of the time we go to vacation but if we compare ourselves to other emerging markets 
you can just see the last two years, the rand lost quite a value against dollar. We can see that for a while well, the US dollar, let's say you had hundred dollars on the beginning of April 2022, you will now have hundred and three dollars with that. But in the rand terms, it weakened quite a bit. Like you said, you can see it almost went to 900 and where we are now. The other emerging markets that did better than us is the Brazil and the Indian rupee. But there's also countries that did, did a lot worse um, with Turkish lira. So if you want to go overseas vacation, Turkey might not be a bad place at this stage. But you can see the Argentina peso because they have a lot of problems. They also got a new president now. But you can see that depreciated almost <laughs> lost all of its value. So this is very important to take note. We might not be the best currency at this stage, but again, who do you compare to? With other emerging markets, we are not shooting the lights out, but we are being stable. Thank you, Ruan. Thank you. Thank you, PJ. Yeah. So where does this practically fit into your investment portfolio? Um, of course, the diversification is extremely important um, and also diversification of currency. Um, any, any assets do you know in, in, in dollar, if you bring it back to, to South Africa, for obvious reasons, um, the value, the value should, should be higher. Uh, thank you, PJ. Um, yes. I'll see you again in about two weeks. You've got something to say before we go. Yes, yeah, definitely that diversification you say is very important. That's also why you don't take all your money <laughs> offshore because it can happen that it strengthens again. But this is only an indication of where the value is because something that's cheap can always become cheaper <laughs> and something that's expensive can always become more expensive. So it's just an indication. It doesn't mean, necessarily mean that's going to happen. It just be aware when you make certain moves. Absolutely. Um Obviously, one of the things we always speak about is to constantly invest. Um, you should never stop investing. Um, always get into the market. And, and of course, if you always invest, you get into the market at different times, at different prices. Um, and over the long term, uh, it would definitely, definitely pay off. Doesn't matter where you find yourself um, in the market uh, in the short term. Thank you, PJ. Uh, all the best. Let's see, uh, let's see each other again in about two weeks. Cheers.